Ja, ja też jestem Piotr i może dlatego miałem się sam zapowiedzieć i zapowiedzieć kolejnych. Nazywam się Piotr Lipalski i wczoraj dyskutowaliśmy o tym, czy należy się przedstawiać, czy należy o sobie coś mówić, czy nie. I ktoś powiedział, że jedyne co pamięta z jakiejś prezentacji to, że był goły facet. I pomyślałem, że możemy od tego zacząć. <grym> Znaczy, ja jakby, to jest to pytanie, skąd się wziąłem. Ja się wziąłem trochę z, z paru światów. To jest jeden z tych światów, to ja jakieś 10 lat temu e, oszczędzę wam wersji na żywo. I, I tak, jakby będąc równocześnie w IT i robiąc teatr, głównie teatr uliczny, w pewnym momencie postanowiłem robić jednak fotografię. Zostawiłem teatr, zająłem się fotografią. Szło nieźle, jakby idzie, mam nadzieję, cały czas, ale stąd już prosta droga do, do dalszych działań, czyli animacja stop motion, wideo, wreszcie blender, który pojawił się w moim życiu w latach, nie wiem, 5 lat temu powiedzmy. Stąd mappingi, stąd jakieś rzeczy animowane i bo, bo to jest tak, jak macie teatr, to musicie wybudować scenografię, zrobić światła, e, muszą przyjść jacyś ludzie, jeszcze fajnie było mieć scenę na ulicy, fajnie było mieć plac, masa kłopotów i jeszcze z tymi innymi ludźmi trzeba ćwiczyć, no, męczące. E, dochodzicie do fotografii, dochodzicie do wniosku, że wystarczy aparat, lampa, jeden facet, jak go nie ma, to się można samemu jakoś tam ustawić i, i zrobić zdjęcie z pilota. E, już jest dobrze, bo jest kontrola, ale... No, trzeba jakoś wyglądać, trzeba się ubrać, trzeba zrobić propsy męczące. E, dochodzicie do tego, że... A, no że właśnie, że przecież jest komputer, taki plan emerytalny. Miałem taką wizję, że jak w pewnym momencie spadnę ze szczudeł albo coś mi się stanie, to, no, to jestem skończony. No, a w przypadku Blendera nawet Stephen Hawking, tam myślę, jakby mu podpiąć myszkę, to, no, to do końca życia można w tej najgorszej wersji jeszcze tworzyć. I, e, no i, i to poczucie kontroli, nie trzeba nikomu płacić, nie trzeba z nikim się użerać, sam jestem sobie panem. Cudowny układ. E, i tu dochodzimy do, do tematu. Blender dla kreatywnych to tak naprawdę tytuł jednej z dwóch książek, które w tej chwili przyszło mi napisać dla Helionu. Historia jest taka jak zawsze w życiu, czyli lata temu napisałem coś dla nich, a ostatnio przy piwie z pół roku temu wpadł temat, a może by coś jeszcze. I na czym się teraz znasz? No, teraz się akurat znałem trochę na Blenderze. Jedna książka jest architektoniczna, architektura i design. Ona się w zasadzie kończy, druga o pięknym tytule Blender dla kreatywnych. Plan jest taki, będzie miała stron 650 i, a, i to jest prośba jakby do Was, jeżeli ktoś ma potrzebę wiedzy po polsku albo chciałby, nie wiem, mamie, ciotce albo dziewczynie dać książkę i wkręcić ją w Blendera. Pomyśl na książkę jest raczej taki tutorialowy, krótkie zadania, dużo zwycięstw. And I should switch to English at this moment because I lost you. <laughs> ok. Uh, so basically, uh, I was doing theater, doing photography, uh, landed on Blender, and because it's easier, I've got total control, nobody to uh, to pay, and uh, and I'm the master. Uh, I'm doing doing uh, two books for the um, Polish publishing uh, company Helion, and uh, the the question is, what should be there, or what would you like to read there? The idea is to cover everything. Um, from modeling to lighting, uh, basic rigging, and so on, so on. But in, in small steps, it's like a written tutorial. Uh, Piotr asked me, why, sh why would you like to write a book which will be out of date before it was printed? And uh, the answer was, there is really no no materials available, the printed ones, for the old school people and the people who have no internet for a moment and uh, or don't use English, which I apologize if it's this is this situation now. Uh, but uh, um, Blender for creative ones. So let's start. What's uh, the creativity? And uh, um, you know, um, Mr. Cleese, you know, the Monty Python, tried for 40 minutes to tell what it is, and he said the only thing he can say about creativity is what it isn't. But he quoted uh, McKinnon and its ability to play. And I think this defines Blender on all levels. Our ability to play, to, to create worlds, to, to, to have total control. Um, Creativity is not a talent, it's not IQ based, so you don't have to be a genius to be creative. Uh, it's a way of uh, working, way of functioning. And uh, this also, I think, applies to Blender. The, the question from yesterday, uh, where to put it? Is it a mathematical uh, topic for the university or not? Uh, I think uh, it's, it's everywhere. You can do animation, you can do science work, uh, but uh, you 
you just have to cover the way of operating and what you do is up to you. Uh, so good artists copy. Um, Steve Jobs said that Picasso said that good artists copy, but uh, great artists steal. Uh, the stealing part we, we put away, uh, but the, the best way to, to boost creativity uh, is to, to watch, is to, to learn, is to, um, to, to get as much as you can. When, when you are young, you think, okay, I will w I'm the, the most brilliant, genius one, and I will discover everything, and uh, I will save the world. And you, then you get older, and you think, okay, maybe I will read some books, or maybe I watch some movie, and maybe somebody is a bit wiser than me. And, and this is good. This is how human beings learn. We learn by copying. Uh, so uh, take notes. This is, I think, the, the, to close the creativity part, the, the best way is, is to note everything, is to, uh, to make photos, to, to snap, to, to combine all the knowledge you found somewhere, and to try to think, okay, what's good in it? What's, what can I learn from it? What, how can I use it? How can I copy it? Maybe at the end, when I'm old, I will add this 5% of my genius. But, uh, but um, we are not getting younger. Time is running. Um, uh, and, and what to do to, to boost this? And, and we are focusing on Blender now, to, to boost our uh, creativity, to boost our abilities to, to learn. Um, and for me, it's uh, um, rewarding. I mean, if I have a reward, whatever it is, if it's a money, uh, if it's money, if it's, I don't know, um, beautiful girl saying, oh, you're a Blender guy, it's so nice, uh, or anything like this, uh, if you have a simple reward, you will do something. It's okay, it's about getting things done, it's about pushing yourself, but uh, hard work is rewarding on a large scale, but it's difficult. You have to work, 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 and someday maybe there will be a reward. And uh, when you watch the, yeah, every presentation has to have some graph, so I did one. Um, <laughs> when you watch, uh, People, uh, you, you know Flickr or um, 5950 um, uh, and so on, so on. All the photo groups uh, do uh, projects. The, pro the idea of the project is not really to, to show somebody your photos, but to do them. Uh, like um, there is the 365, you snap a photo every day, uh, you snap a photo every week, you do a project like, okay, I'll do some auto portrait and so on, so on. And it's not about what what you do, the, 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 there will be many days, weeks with crappy photos, but it's not about it. The, the, the graph here has some sense, uh, and it goes for somebody like the, uh, okay, przepraszam <coughs> tłumaczy. Uh, for somebody, uh, the graph will go like uh, the yellow one, you, you've got this boost of your abilities because you shoot every day, suddenly you see more, you make better photos. And uh, then there are somebody who will work hard and not really much happens, but, but you still uh, keep growing. And there are the guys who said, yeah, I could do this. Yeah, yeah, no problem, photos. Uh, and after a year t telling me, yeah, I can do this. Yeah, I know how to do, I have a great camera. Uh, they are at the same level. And the, the same things, the same thing applies to, to everything in life, but I think it applies to Blender uh, as it uh, grows rapidly as it develops rap rapidly. Uh, so uh, we've got a problem because if you stay in the place where you were such a great modeler, designer, whatever, uh, two months later you don't know, I don't know, 200 new features. Two months later you don't know 400 features and a year later you're obsolete. I mean, you, you still have the craft you, you earned, but, uh, but nothing happened. Okay, if, if you have a lot of work and the client is pushing you, maybe, maybe you will develop, but, but again, you will uh, land on what you know. This is the muscle memory, so um, like uh, Hubert said, it's great to use one, two, three, but I will use control tab because, yeah, whole life I used control tab and this one, two, three is the new thing for me. And the only way to, to really uh, improve or catch up uh, is to, to try to do something. And there is a guy, Philip K. Dick, he did most of the uh, Hollywood movies uh, being dead already uh, because all the fantasy, fantasy uh, sci-fi ideas, most of them come from his books. And he's, he, he had two things. One that 
if somebody wanted something uh, great, he did a great fantastic. And if somebody wanted a lot of spiders, he wrote about spiders. Um, but he wrote a lot. And he said that uh, if you want to sell a story, uh, have a great story, you make it short. If you want to earn money, you uh, write a book. But, but the idea is really, really short. And then it grows to, because you have to sell 300 pages. And the, the story about Peter Jackson making three films about three books from Tolkien, that was beautiful. And now Hobbit is three films, because it's more money. Um, so less is more. And to conclude, uh, First thing, you, you don't, uh, this is an animation from 2008. It's short, but it will allow you to watch something, not to listen to me. It was made, I think, in XSI soft image before it was Autodesk bot, uh, before Autodesk bought it, or I don't really know. But uh, the girl is Julia Simone, and, and this is about what is the minimum amount of work that can be beautiful. Uh, and can be delivered. If, if she wanted to do it properly, I think it, uh, it wouldn't be still around. And just watch. So basically, uh, it was a storyboard, uh, but if she tried to animate it, the whole thing, it took, I should think it would took like two years more and wouldn't be that beautiful. You said, okay, it's a crappy animator and so on, so on. You've got an idea, you, you develop it and you deliver. And, and this is, this is the, the part about the real artists deliver. Uh, so uh, there is a guy, Malcolm Gladwell, you maybe know him from a Blink book and, and so on. And, uh, uh, his idea is that uh, your mind works all the time. And sometimes you just see a thing for a second, a part of a second, and you know. 
you know, it's good, you know, it's bad. There is a story about some art dealers uh, seeing a beautiful sculpture. It costed like, I don't know, $20 million and Getty was buying it. And they took some people, experts, to see if it's original. They did anal analyze it. It was okay, it was 14 or, I don't know, 2,000 years old and so on and so on. But everybody who they asked to, what do you think, on the expert level, level said, something is wrong. And Gladwell uh, goes for this idea. Uh, and there's another guy who is uh, Cesar Kuriyama. And on TED two years ago, he had an idea that his life is spinning so fast that he doesn't remember anything. But if he snaps only a second a day, a second of life a day, uh, his mind will remind him immediately what happened. This, this blink thing, OK, everything, everything goes on. So a uh, part of this experiment which is going on, uh, and So the idea was that he, when he will be 50, 60 years old, he will have a seven hour long movie that will remind him every good moment uh, from last 30 years. Uh, and uh, I could watch it forever, but th there is a moment uh, when uh, a few shots, one after another in the hospital, and suddenly you know, okay, something happened. Um, and uh, what, what you have seen, if, if you think about it, Every, there was only a second of a day, but you, you see everything else. I mean, your mind uh, goes uh, around and around to say, okay, th there was something happening, and you instantly know what happened, even if you don't have a time, if you were asked how many people were there, what was, it, it doesn't matter. You've got this feeling, okay, th that was something. For him, it's, it's all the memories, and there's the nice idea of not, uh, when you go to the concert, you see 1,000 uh, phones uh, recording the crappy concert on a crappy camera, in your phone and uh, nobody's uh, listening because they are looking at those phones, okay, I've got a great shot. And th th this guy goes for a concert, records one second and then listens. And I think th 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 that one uh, works. And from him, I got to two animators, the McLeod brothers, and they did a project that I'd like to invite you to. Uh, they do one second of an animation a day. Only one second. Uh, it's simple, I mean, it's, uh, oh, look. So, uh, so the only thing to change is do it in Blender. Uh, and the idea was when I was talking with uh, Piotr, um, I had about two months to the conference and okay, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And I will have to show you this beautiful 60 seconds of incredible Blender work. Then some work happened and then another work happened. I did, I think, five seconds maybe, but on the, on the same uh, basis. Uh, there is a new feature I would like to try. So, okay, I, I oh, there is a great, I don't know, rigid, rigid body uh, add-on. Let's, let's see how it works. It works for a second. I uh, uh, render it, put it on a hard drive. I've got my muscle memory. I don't read about it. I don't have time uh, sometimes to, to watch the tutorial, do the tutorial. I just do a small fix. Uh, it takes me, I don't know, half an hour, 15 minutes. I can afford that. Uh, 
and I have this incredible feeling of doing something. I mean, I did it. I did it. I have 40, 24 frames of incredible work. I will put it somewhere at the end. I will put it on YouTube. I don't know Vimeo and say, okay, this is my year in developing. I know this will make this curve of being better in whatever I choose uh, work. So uh, for the new new things that that happen, like new modifier, new render engine, new whatever, a second is not a thing that will take your life away. It's okay, it's, it doesn't have to move even. The only thing to make it better for people is to, to add some sound. Uh, uh, because, uh, uh, but, but yes, you, you did finish something. So you can wake up next day and okay, I'm the guy. I did this for 24 frames, whatever happens else. Uh, I did finish something and this is the clue to boost creativity uh, as much as possible. If you finish something, uh, it's, I think it's Neil, uh, Neil Gaiman, uh, if you finish something, you, you feel like, okay, I can do anything now. So uh, I had this project a year ago, I bought uh, Sebastian's um, uh, DVD and they said, okay, this is, this is the idea. I will learn to track and uh, do this incredible building. There is an old, uh, and there, there isn't an old uh, Jewish prayer house, uh, synagogue, and that was destroyed in Gliwice uh, during the Crystal Night. Uh, and I thought, okay, there's this empty place in the city. I will go with the camera and uh, build this uh, synagogue and make a one minute uh, postcard of the past. I did the camera thing, I did model the, uh, the synagogue, and suddenly the anniversary went over, I didn't have time, and uh, uh, yeah, and it's still there. So you will see it for one second uh, at the end. Uh, and m maybe th this is, okay, this incredible, great, huge project, and the guy from Midbusters told that projects are those which have a deadline, and those which you will make for your whole life because it's never ended. So uh, I think the 24 frames is, is a fix. It's a fix to uh, evolve, to improve, and to have this beautiful feeling I did it. So <laughs> this is a fix, uh, a fix of a fix. I mean, I did those five frames for you, especially like, okay, th this will be beautiful. And then the next 25 is from all around of my hard drive because you just see it at least 30 seconds and they will not notice. Uh, so at the end, I really invite you to try this because it gives all that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, Michał Wielczyński. Questions. Oh, uh, any questions? How to do 24 frames? You, you render from 1 to 24 in Blender, and then just, just go for it. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Julia Simon. Thank you.